You also make an important point in your note that you don't see the investment cycle turning for another 12 months. Yeah, I think that's where we probably disagree with consensus that a lot of people have been playing the recovery and the investment cycle. But I think if you look at the investment cycle, it's, it's been, it, well, there was a build-up of, of macroeconomic and, and general imbalances that have caused a deterioration in, in the investment cycle. And I think those, those things take time to unwind. So whilst we see a recovery in investment to about 5.4% growth this year, we think it will come later than people expect. And I think capital goods stocks, industrial stocks have already run up a long way reflecting that. And I think the, the positive thing on the investment cycle is if you look at funding costs, we do think that you're going to see the repo rate coming down. So already this month, probably 25 basis points and maybe up, up to 125 basis points between now and, and April 2014. But, and also, I think if you look at importantly, international funding costs have come down a lot. Yeah. So for those that can borrow abroad. So that helps, but the other factor is one that is politically difficult to resolve, which is the, ultimately policy decisions, project approvals at the bureaucracy level are, are taking time. I think the, it, there's been a big drive over the last 18 months, two years, towards transparency and accountability, which is a good thing in the long term, but the cost of that is, I think, is, is slower growth and, and slower project approvals in, in the meantime, and I don't think that trend is going is to change. So for all the PMO's efforts, and now you've got the Cabinet Committee on Investment, you're not seeing it in terms of lead indicators. There are no lead indicators that show the investment cycle has started to turn. If you look at project approvals, cancellations, they're all either flat or still trending down. So you need to look for those, those things to turn before being confident about the investment cycle. So there's a risk there for this year. So are you in the camp which believes we will take out the all-time highs this year? I think we probably will this year, yeah. Um, I mean, several years later on, on a much higher base of earnings, but I think, yeah, it's, it's, it's likely. And do you believe, I don't think it's going to, sorry. Do you believe the worst in earnings is over? Or we're going to see another one or two stress quarters? I think this quarter you'll still see, I think what, we, what we've described as is bobbling along the bottom. It's, I think the, the major downgrades in earnings have, have come off and I think you'll see improvements in terms of margins with funding costs coming off and also commodity price inflation has clearly moderated which helps in terms of margins and I think you are, you're at a cyclical low in terms of, in terms of margins and then revenue growth is still under pressure. And that's a risk. But I think we're, we're sort of at all, at largely at the bottom, but we have not seen a turn in the earnings cycle. So we're not at the point of calling a recovery in earnings for the next couple of quarters. But I think you'll, you'll gradually see it at the back, back end of this calendar year. Given the global factors, which again you've articulated, the changes that have happened, both US, China, Europe, and you've made the strong point that we had 26.6 billion coming in last mm. year from FIIs, but 4.2 billion outflows from domestic. Fund flows-wise, liquidity-wise, because it was largely a liquidity-driven mm. kind of a market last year, right? Because you made the point that pretty much everything, as far as the macros were concerned, were all negative, and yet the markets rallied the way they did. Mm -hmm. How do you see that playing out in 2013? In terms of fund flows? Yes. I think, I think um, well, if you, the, the first week of January where everybody was back at work, so the week ending the 11th of January, there were $22 billion of inflows into equity funds, which is the second highest on record. The, the highest was in, I think, September 2007, or the peak of a bull market, and it was the highest week ever for emerging markets. So the allocation into emerging markets, I think, will be strong because of this point about you, investors have been forced up the risk curve because the yields are so low on, on, on various forms of fixed income. So I think it flows into emerging markets generally good, what does India get in terms of its specific allocation? I think it'll, it's, I think it'll un unlikely be a repeat of last year, where it's 26 billion, because you're starting at a point where India is not a major underweight. It was a major underweight in gem portfolios at the beginning of last year, and because of the point about valuation. So I think flows will be strong because of the overall allocation. I think in terms of India's share, which India achieved the highest share of any of the Asian geographies last year, I think it will depend on particularly momentum in policy this year, continued momentum, which the year started well. Um, we've seen recent moves, the rail fares, the moves on diesel prices, which are all encouraging, and I think continued momentum on that will, will be key for fund flows coming through the year as well as the general allocation point.